All right, today we're going to look at a positive phrases in our writing. I need you to go ahead and put your name at the top of the page. And let's go ahead and look at the definition of an apositive phrase. It's a noun phrase, okay, so underline a noun phrase, identifying a person, place, or thing named in a sentence. Now, I wrote renaming above identifying because that's what it basically does. It renames another noun, okay. It has to have a noun in its phrase that renames another noun that preexisted before it in the sentence, okay. So, apositives oft often begin with wor the words a, an, or the. They always answer one of the quest these questions. Who is he? Who is she? Who are they? If it's renaming a person. Or what is it or what are they if it's renaming a place or a thing. Okay, let's go ahead and look at some examples. And I need you to mark your examples like I've done on the screen here. Um, examples, identifying people. Don Gross was a tough guy, comma, an ex-Marine who had never lost his military manner. Okay, I've underlined the apositive phrase, an ex-Marine who had never lost his military manner. The noun in that phrase is ex-Marine and it's renaming guy. So I've drawn an arrow. The next example, identifying places. Once they were in her office, comma, a small room with a large welcoming fire, Professor McGon McGonagall motioned to Harry and Herm Hermione to sit down. Okay, now the apostrophe phrase I've underlined, a small room with a large welcoming fire, it's renaming office. The actual noun in the apostrophe phrase is room, but all the other words are just additional um, descriptive words, which is a part of the apostrophe phrase. The last one, identifying things. When it was quite late, he muttered something, went to the closet and drew forth an evil weapon, comma, a long yellowish tube ending in bellows and a trigger. Now, this apostrophe phrase is renaming weapon. The actual noun tube is renaming weapon. So please mark all of these as they are on the screen and um, underline and draw the arrow and you'll not get counted off any points for following directions, okay? Okay, let's look at a few more examples of apositives. A balding, smooth-faced man, comma, he could have been anywhere between 40 and 60. Now, I've underlined the apositive phrase, a balding, smooth-faced man is renaming he, and I forgot to draw the arrow. Would you please draw an arrow from man to he? There's the noun man renaming the pronoun he. So there's another apostrophe phrase. Let's look at number two. Lou Epstein, comma, the oldest, shortest, and baldest of the three Epstein brothers, comma, barely looked up from the cash register when Alfred entered the store. So the entire apostrophe phrase is the oldest, shortest, and baldest of the three Epstein brothers. Okay, so those three nouns, oldest, shortest, and baldest, all rename Lou Epstein. So draw three little arrows all back to Lou Epstein. Number three, in the locker room, I am, um, I packed for the trip to New Orleans, comma, the road trip that would change my life and destiny as an athlete forever. So I've underlined the entire apostrophe phrase, the road trip that would change my life and destiny as an athlete forever. And the word road trip is just renaming trip. Okay, so I've drawn my arrow, the noun road trip, back to the noun trip. Okay, please do all that on your paper. You don't want to get points off for not underlining or not drawing the arrows. Okay, um, turn the page and on the back you can see multiple apositives being used in a sentence to rename a noun. Let's look at number four. In New York, the most important state in any presidential race and a state where politics were particularly sensitive to the views of various nationality and minority groups, Democrats were joyous and Republicans angry and gloomy. So we have two positive phrases here that are renaming New York. You have the first one, the most important state in any presidential race, and the noun state is renaming New York. So draw an arrow from state to New York, and then you have the second one, and a state where politics were particularly sensitive to the views of various nationality and minority groups. So that's the second positive phrase, and you need to draw an arrow from the noun state in it back to New York as well. So that's quite a long sentence, and it uses two positive phrases. Okay, let's look at number five. The dawn came quickly now. A wash, a glow, a lightness, and then an explosion of fire as the sun arose out of the gulf. Now you may remember this sentence from the pearl. All three, all four of those things, a wash, 
a glow, a lightness, and an explosion of fire are all different positives renaming Dawn. So underline each of those and then draw your arrows back to Dawn. Okay, let's look at number six. Beneath the dragon, under all his limbs and his huge quill tail, and about him on all sides stretching away from the unseen floor, floors, lay countless piles of precious things, gold wrought and unwrought, gems and jewels, and silver red stained in the ruddy light. Now there are one, two, three, four apostrophes in this one as well. Gold wrought and unwrought is one, and it's renaming the jewels, or things, excuse me, the word things. Gems and jewels is also renaming things, and then silver, red stained in the ready light, is also renaming precious things. So underline all of those and draw your arrows back to things. Please don't forget to do that because that you'll get points off. Now we're going to skip the matching section, okay? So go ahead and turn to the next page. Okay, now let's look at the um, last page at expanding. And this is the actual assignment where you're going to um, be writing some positive phrases yourself. Number one, write the whole sentence. At the slash mark, add an positive phrase. Now it is um, 10 points worth. So if you don't write the whole sentence and you just write the um, actual slash mark part, you're gonna get points off. So you have to rewrite the whole sentence. Number two, underline the positive phrase in this whole sentence, so underline that part, and then draw an arrow from the positive phrase to the noun that it's renaming, okay? So that's worth two points each, so the underline of the positive phrase and the arrow. So that's four points. You don't want to mess up on any of these, okay? Number three, grammar and spelling count too, so take your time and be um, conscientious. Okay, let's look at my example. The sentence stem reads, I gave my grammar assignment to Mrs. Reigns. Then there's a backslash, and that is where I add my positive phrase. So it reads, I gave my grammar assignment to Mrs. Reigns, comma, the queen of goofballs. And so the entire positive phrase, I will underline the queen of goofballs, then I double underline the noun, and then I draw an arrow back to the um, noun, which is a proper noun, Mrs. Reigns. Okay, now you're going to do the same thing. Wherever the slash mark occurs in the sentence, that's where you'll add in a positive phrase. Now just please remember, um, do all the underlining and the arrows because you do not want points off and you want to check your spelling and punctuation as well so that you can um, do really well on this and have fun writing fun, um, interesting, creative, a positive phrases for the six sentences below. Now you will turn this in tomorrow to your teacher, so please do not um, forget it at home after you finish this tonight as homework. Please um, be sure and turn this in tomorrow on time.